Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. We are right back on the Ford Super Duty Built Not Bought Scrap Truck Dump Truck build it's not my catchiest title but it's what we're calling this thing we've done a ton of work to this we've taken two scrap trucks getting them all cleaned up and we're trying to make a decent running rig out of this for the homestead and learn a little bit about building trucks in the process because i've definitely never done anything like this before and you're going to notice in the videos this is where we sit now with it the cab is off and on the ground and hopefully we can get that arranged somewhere where we can get to the bottom side of that today but where we're starting off is getting this frame painted all the cleanup prep is done with all the wire wheels. We just got to get into the degreaser and we'll be ready to go. It's almost too much chit chat for the intro, but I got to get you up to speed. Let's get started on this. To degrease this thing, we're going to use this PC50 Pre-Clean. Why am I using this? Because it was on clearance at the local tractor store normally like 45 bucks it was on sale for like 15 bucks or something crazy now we're going to start with this made in lincoln nebraska van sickle paint manufacturing are they still in business is this why it was on clearance did they go out oh that's an odor okay so on the back end we're only painting to like here this is going to get chopped off and some work done so we can put a pinnel hitch on the back of it. So we're not gonna get too crazy on this side of the operation. And then as I'm going over, if I see anything that still needs touched up flake wise, probably a good time to do it. I do have the new body mounts ordered. They're supposed to be in this weekend. So that's good. Oh, yeah, we talked about it a little bit on the previous video, but I'm not doing any of the suspension components in complete honesty. I just don't have the energy to do a good job on it right now. So that's something we'll do at a later date. We're gonna replace those struts or shocks anyway. When we get the wheel off, we get all those components out. That's when I'll do the suspension. Big old chunk of something right here. Whole bunch in there yet. Guys will paint over stuff like that and they'll be mad their paint didn't work. Plug those in. So here's a really good example of what we're trying to get rid of. This is some PB blaster from when we were taking those spring mounts off. That's the kind of stuff. So ideally, we'll rub this down, get it off of there, and that'll dry out. And we'll just see bare clean metal. My understanding is this is like a proportional valve. There's supposed to be a little rod, I'm assuming probably went on there. And depending on how much weight was on the truck, the more weight that was on there, that would make contact and adjust that and increase the amount of braking on the back of the rig. I don't know if this one still works. You think you have every spot, and then you just see one more thing, and one more thing, and before you know it, 
30 more things later. It's 2025. Very liberal with the PB blaster on this body mount bolt. Kind of regret it now. I think targeted hits in the future when you know you're gonna be painting something with penetrating oil would be the smarter thing. Paint the frame, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Nobody actually said that, it was just in my head at the time. It'll be worth it. If we quit looking, it's probably gonna be done. If you got the money and the resources to get it there, and there's one nearby, I think a sandblaster would be key. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious if I'm the only one like this or if anybody else out there is similar in this way. Whenever I make progress, that progress motivates me to get to the next step. But there are steps like this where we're doing the same thing over and over and over again, just cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and getting everything prepped and ready that I actually lose motivation to even get to the next step of the project, which is kind of the old catch-22 because if I lose the motivation to get to the next step and the next step is what I need to create the motivation to keep progressing, well, then I get in this rut and I almost just don't want to do it anymore. But we're so close at this point, I think we're going to get it. We're using the POR or POR15, however you want to say it. Top coat, direct to metal, rust preventative, no need for primer or undercoat. That's fantastic professional use. Hopefully they don't check my license on that. Chassis black is what we're going with. I'm just going to brush it. That way I can get in every little nook and cranny as we go. If you got a spray set up, you can absolutely spray this. A lot of people have. Not worried about anything being too athletic on us as far as runs go. But we may put a little effort into it looking decent. I don't know. We'll just have to see. This is what I needed. This makes me happy. Now I'm happy. Where's my chair? And then we bring the chair in for a little bit of luxury. Isn't that something? Sixty degrees, sun shining, light breeze, reaping the rewards of some hard work. That's a good day. So I'm gonna do one coat of the POR15 rust preventative coating. And then just because I have it, I know it says you don't need a top coat and I don't think we're gonna need the top coat either, but I've got some really good Rust-Oleum Farm enamel black paint. I wanna go ahead and roll a second coat on top of this. I think that looks pretty good. The second coat's on. Everything looks to be covered fairly well. I'm sure as we start turning it around, we're gonna find a few little missed spots, but that's not too big a deal. We can just give her a quick spritz at that point. Definitely has its fair share of athleticism going on. Nothing wrong with that though. As long as we've got the coverage. Well, I could stand here and smile at it all day, but I think we ought to move on to the next step. I just can't stop staring at that frame over there. It looks so good. That thing will last another 30 years like that. And hopefully by then I can just afford one. I'd really love to just roll this thing on its back. I'm worried about that glass, but I don't have much of a plan. Hear me out. If a fella had an extra cab laying around, wouldn't this be a really cool entrance to like a secret underground bunker? Just looks like a junk truck sitting out in your yard, but boom, safety or, or something. Hopefully those plastic fender wells will just kind of move out of my way for me.
I don't really like it. No, I don't really like that. Those hooks are real set. Like a little. I'm more afraid I'm gonna rip that off, you know. Well, I got a new plan. I don't like it much better, but not the best uh, hook securement here. But you know, here we go. I need to tighten that up quite a bit. I got a clevis that goes into into this fork to hook hooks onto. I lost it. Imagine that. Don't lift with ratchet straps, you know. It's not smart. But I feel more comfortable with that. Now I just don't want it to go slamming on me and breaking that glass. All right, that's got the weight of it there. So we should be able to just drive forward now. I don't want to lift anymore because if I lift, it'll swing. We just want to walk it forward a little bit. This is when I wish my parking brake worked. I really don't want it resting on that. I wish I had a way to make that just stay for me. Well, it's not ideal working underneath, but we've got her propped in a way I'm pretty comfortable with. We're gonna work on the bottom side of this thing. I'm afraid to block that back corner and let it sit on that because I'm just convinced it's gonna end up breaking that back glass. So we'll just let it ride like it is right now. What we're gonna do is fix up the bottom side of this pan. We did all that work on the top side. A lot of people said, don't you have to weld the bottom? The answer is no. If we're doing it right, we're welding through the whole time. And you can see our welds look good all the way around. Well, good remember i'm not a welder i just own one but you can see we got real good penetration everything looks nice but what we got to do is little spots like this clean up just a little bit where there's some lip wire wheel everything down flap wheel stuff down seam seal it prime it and we're going to wire wheel it flap wheel it prime it seam seal it undercoat it i need this truck to last long enough that i can afford to buy the next one ready to go right so we're talking a long time this heat shield's riveted in you gotta get those rivets out first. Looking very nice, better than I expected to be honest. Give her the old rub down with some degreaser. It's pretty wild because you'll look at this and you'll think, oh, that's clean. I don't need to do anything too crazy with it. And then you go over with the degreaser and you just watch everything disappear in front of your eyes. And we'll get all that wiped off. And you should be ready for some primer. Just using the Rust-Oleum Professional, huh? Primer, fast drying, bare metal, or sound rusted surfaces. Yep, I got to work. All right.
See if we can't get this lowered down. Give it primer a chance to dry. to cover it up all right so if I can get these seams sealed tonight this can sit overnight and then we can do the bed liner in the morning I'm using barrier bond last time I used Eastwood and I really liked it but not on Eastwood's website or on Amazon it is the brushable available right now for whatever reason so I ordered this a little bit less expensive it seems very similar in application just as satisfying as it was on the top side. We'll go over the weld, and since on the bottom side we can kind of see where the overlap is, we're gonna have some pretty wide coverage, but that's okay. So with the sun setting, here's what we look like. I had just enough to run all of my seams, and then I ran the whole inside of that seam as well. They did that from the factory. We kind of cleaned it off and just redid it. Doesn't look as fancy as the factory, but I think it'll get the job done. We'll let that sit overnight. Come back in the morning and do some undercoating. I'm sticking with the clearance section at the store I went to the other day. They had this on sale. It was normally like 40 bucks a can. They had it for 12 bucks. Don't mind if I do. I don't know if it's any good or not, to be completely honest with you. But it's probably going to be better than what's under there now, which is nothing. this at all I don't like this at all not a fan of that at all there's more aggregate in it then there is paint I'm pretty sure it says to roll it it says do not thin there's nothing left in the can as far as stuff that would thin that out to make it more user friendly we're just gonna go ahead and do the bottom in the equipment enamel it's good tough stuff I just thought we'd try the liner since it was on sale good opportunity this equipment enamel it'll be plenty tough though Much better. Look at it. Would you just look at it? Look at it. That is something. Look at this rig. These are coming in this weekend. We'll get those pulled and we'll just have to touch up where we work on that. But look at it. What a fine looking frame. I am loving it. We're going to let that dry. I'm going to put a second coat on it. But that enamel, when I roll it, 
it's super thick. And what I found is because of how thick it rolls on, it just takes a little bit longer to dry. So we'll probably let that dry for a day or two before we put the second coat on. I'm spending the rest of the day on engine mounts in the engine and getting everything ready to paint the block a little bit and get the engine set in. We're gonna put the engine and transmission on the frame before we put the cab back on. That's the goal because it just seems like the easiest way to do it. Getting these two paint steps done has given me more motivation and lit a fire under me and I'm ready to keep pushing on this thing. I've stood here for 30 seconds trying to come up with a clever outro, but I'm just too dang excited about this to be thinking about it. You're just gonna have to take a thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one and I hope it's good enough for you.